Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. Holly Shield here for Calkine TV, welcoming you all to another edition of Executive Corner Expert Talks. The show where we bring you industry leaders, successful business owners and market experts all under one roof to help you discover the latest economic insights. On today's show, we're joined by Janine Klepp, founder and chief executive officer of Digital Twinning Australia, a market leader in industry 4.0 strategic digital asset management. Welcome to the show, Janine. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Well, it's an honor to be here. Thank you very much. Great to have you on. Now, DTA is quite young, founded in 2019, I believe, so just a few years ago. Congratulations on that three-year mark. Thank you. Yes, um, it's taken us a little while to uh, get here. Um, my career is uh, fairly extensive and the people that I've surrounded myself with are also um, highly credible um, experts in their field. So um, whilst we launched this business in uh, 2019, we come with a fairly strong pedigree and um, expertise sitting behind us. Well, that's very good to hear that you have that strong foundation. So to kick things off, for those who might not know, what is digital twinning and how is it used in strategic asset management? Yes, look, in a very short space of time, digital twinning um, has acquired a number of different meanings. Um, everybody's got one. It's a little bit like having a shiny toy and a lolly, really. But um, and this is, is certainly creating a little bit of confusion for, um, for people. So my team and I have been working with um, the a number of different inaugural global standards organisations to help define the term. And, and more recently, I've been invited by Standards Australia to join their digital twinning working group and also the IEC, which is um, an international group out of Switzerland. And again, the purpose of this is to actually try and create a common understanding and a common language. The term that I use mostly is uh, synchronising digital twin. And essentially, this takes a 3D replica of an asset and it inserts sets of data. So whether that's, is my light turned off and on, or um, temperature, vibration, those sorts of things. Um, and this turns um, a, a physical asset, which is essentially is quite static, um, into a working replica and makes a little bit more than just a dashboard full of graphs and numbers. At Digital Twinning Australia, we take uh, this a step or two further and with our twin, we harvest, curate and harmonise data from across the business. And then we put it inside a static 3D replica um, of physical assets and then we link it all together. I, to help people understand this, I um, often talk about driverless cars, trains and trams. So when um, getting the car to operate safely and efficiently, we know that it requires you know, um, a number of critical engine components, it requires electronics um, and, and instrumentation for it all actually to work together. Now, it's the same as big lumpy assets in mining and infrastructure, um, at Digital Twinning Australia, we're effectively doing the same thing. We are synchronising the digital twin by putting all that together. Okay, that's a solid explanation there. And you mentioned the, uh, the focus, your area of focus, where mining and energy construction, and I believe infrastructure sectors as well. How would you say DTA is uniquely positioned to cater to these sectors? Um, our customers have mountains of, of data and data that they um, guess they use, but they also don't know how to access all of it terribly well or manipulate it, bring it all together um, so that they can actually turn it into meaningful information. This is not a new problem. This is a problem that's been around for a while and um, thanks to advances in technology, we're actually able to resolve this problem now in different ways. So the Digital Twinning Australia platform solution is a top down. What we do is we start with performance objectives and um, we're looking for the assets that are critical for generating revenue. Now from that vantage point, what we do is we um, harvest and, cu and curate data 
Um, so we go into all the big filing cabinets and warehouses and lakes and we take all the relevant information and put it inside the digital replica so it's contextually visualised. So it's not a dashboard, it's not graphs, it's a, so it actually is the thing itself. And what this does, it actually makes it really easier, much easier to access and it also democratises the data. So what that means is that People from across the organisation, it doesn't matter whether they're home, in the office, they're geographically somewhere else, is that they can all actually look at the same thing and we can get all the data relevant to that thing, the asset, in one place so that they then are able to have those um, complex conversations and solve problems around how to optimise the cost to operate their business, how to make products cheaper, how to automate um, something that's unsafe or hard for customers to access, those sorts of bigger problems. So they're looking at it from a top-down perspective and they're looking at it from not only a revenue perspective but also for their customers. So essentially it allows everyone to be on the same page across the board? Absolutely. Yes, it does. It does. And how does effectively harnessing and visualising that key data help businesses maximise their capital assets? Right. So if I go back to my uh, driverless um, car kind of scenario, uh, people are easy. It, people find that a little bit easier. So please bear with me just for a moment with that one. So the the car is a is a is a capital purchase, just like a house. It's a capital purchase for us, and that price is actually made up of lots of bits of equipment, um, widgets and things. But what it actually, but it is a thing in its own right. It just, it's parked, it's sitting there. It's, it's a thing, right? Um, and when we use the vehicle, what it does, it, it actually starts to gather data and data is now replicating the thing, the vehicle, um, in motion. And once that vehicle is in motion, now what we have is more value. And so it's now we've got two things. We've got the vehicle that has a value and now we've got data that actually has a value, but it's the data in motion that actually has the real value. Now in the, in the capital world in infrastructure, mining and construction, what's actually happening is the capital asset, that physical thing, um, it ages and as it ages, it actually loses value. It doesn't become more valuable, it actually becomes less valuable. Now, if we, using digital twin technologies, if we um, harness the information um, that makes that asset valuable, that means it has a longer life, it becomes more efficient, it doesn't break down as much, all those sorts of things. If we can actually do that, then what we're doing is that we're um, visualising or turning our lumpy assets into assets in motion and it's the assets in motion that now create an additional value to dumb, heavy, lumpy capital assets. Right, and that must be really key as these technologies and assets evolve over time. Yes, it does. And it does. And we've seen that um, over the last few years, particularly as we've seen the acceleration in technology, that we're now actually able to do things we used to dream about, whereas today um, it's like a, a jigsaw has come together and all these things we dreamed about we can actually now do, which is wonderful. It's a wonderful thing. I, I find is, it quite exciting. Right, <laughs> incredible. Sorry. Yes. Now, you've been trusted by the Government of South Australia, Transport Sydney Trains and many more. Could you shed some light on your current client base? Uh, sure. So, um, we think of our clients as genuine leaders in Industry 4 and in IoT and we're very proud to be working with them. And um, what's most exciting is that um, they, you know, have stopped talking about it and they've actually started doing something which is even more exciting. Um, working in the energy sector, we've got clients who are in that transition from fossils to renewables. So what they've been doing is looking for ways to add value to their own business. And that's um, some of the things there is, it's like we're visualising networks so that 
um, they can help the um, homeowners understand um, how the energy is actually being used or going to be used into the future and how safe that is and what that transaction actually looks like. Um, and then also in that sector, these organisations are looking for new ways to um, build capability and be responsible when it comes to governance and society and the environment. And they're looking at putting um, energy twins into schools so that um, the marketplace basically can um, accelerate and take up. In the mining sector, the focus is more on harvesting and cur curating the data from across the business so that digital threads can be created. Now, a digital thread um, is where we've actually got a digital image of um, an asset or an environment, and um, we actually use that data um, once and we just keep building onto it. We just, we don't repeat it over and over again, like, or we don't redo it over and over again. That's what a digital thread means, that we can recycle and reuse our data. And setting up those foundations is the work that's actually happening in that area. In the manufacturing um, sector, we're demonstrating how the digital twin platform actually accelerates entry um, into um, Industry 4.0 for smaller manufacturing organisations, not the real big ones with lots of money, but how do the smaller ones actually get involved in it? And then the other one that we're working um, on is how we're using um, the technologies to actually de-risk um, bottlenecks. So everyone's got a backload of um, work that needs to be done or they're having difficulties getting um, increases in production through. And so what we've actually got are bottlenecks forming. So we're helping with the de-risking of those bottlenecks. Right, so it sounds like the work is quite varied across the different sectors. Um, it's not so much varied. I mean, the sectors, um, uh, it, uh, I take it, it does sound varied. We've got three sectors I was just talking about then. But the actual mechanics or what sits underneath how we do that is actually a repeatable process. So because a digital twin is just simply taking the data that is moving from if you like, one direction to the other, almost, in that context, and all we're doing is harnessing it and putting it somewhere. So the topic can change, but the actual process involved in delivering um, uh, outcomes for that uh, for that topic is actually the same. Okay, that actually does make quite a bit of sense. Well, just before we close, could you let me know what's next for Digital Twinning Australia? Do you have any yeah. new developments or expansions on the horizon? Uh, yes, we've got um, uh, we've got a lot happening, which is um, which is great. Um, we're, we are definitely market leaders, there's no question about that. And so I've got a, a responsibility to maintain that position and also to grow the business. Um, important to me is making sure that I hang on to the values and principles that have got us this far. Um, I think they're important. Um, but the, we are accelerating our growth and we're doing that um, with the support of a capital raising activity at the moment. So this is the first time we've ever gone to the market. We've been self-funded for a while, but now we need to capital raise. Um, I've started recruiting and um, I've got to keep going. We're also onboarding um, a sales team and um, we've established some very uh, strong partnerships and now I'm wanting to have the time to embrace those partnerships. And while all that's going on, we're actually expanding into the um, APAC manufacturing sector. We've been invited in to um, help them, um, it, you know, create an industry 4.0 manufacturing sector. Um, they think that our technology, or they believe our technology is the one that's actually going to get them there faster. And so, um, we're there and we're helping them and uh, it's, uh, it's very exciting. Well, I must say congratulations and good luck with the capital raising. We'll be keeping an eye on that and we look forward yes. to see your acceleration. Thank you. I'll come back and tell you all about it. There's lots of lessons in all of this, so I'm happy to share. That would be great. 
Well, on that note, it's just about time to wrap up, but I've got to thank you so much for joining us today, Janine. It's been great to hear your insights. My pleasure, and thank you, and thank you to your audience. And thanks for your time as well, viewers. Stay tuned for more live updates. And as we say here, stay prize and invest wise with Calkine. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calkine TV. This is Leave straight from Kalkine Studio. You're watching Go Green with Kalkine. Today, let's discuss how Canada is set to help farmers adopt clean technologies. In its efforts to cut carbon emissions by 2030, the Canadian government has come up with a new agricultural initiative to assist farmers. The Agricultural Clean Technology Program, ACTP, announced earlier in June, is set to be worth almost 166 million Canadian dollars. Agriculture and Agri-Food Minister Marie-Claude Babal has said that with this program, farmers and agribusinesses will be able to receive funds for developing and adopting clean technologies. This move aims to reduce greenhouse gas 